Hey y'all. I don't know the best angle for this this evening. I don't. This is hard. This is what is hard so far. And actually, it's probably the hardest part of doing the martinis with Amanda every Monday night is making sure that I've got like the perfect little setup that way so the lighting's not too bad and um, you can see everything that we do. And especially tonight when we're doing like a craft, you'd want to be able to see everything we're doing. And like there's all this like space above me that I would prefer not there. But if I tilt the camera down, to me it's kind of awkward. I don't know if you think, but then there's all this kind of random space. So, um, I'm still trying to figure things out myself. And again, like I've said in the past, I want <laughs> your suggestions. I want your feedback. Anything that you know can help me um, make this successful. Because, like I said, I'm only a month in. This is, um, we're into June, so this is the first one of June. And um, to start it, you know, at the beginning of May. So, um, I'm new to this whole shindig. <laughs> so, I'd love to um, hear your suggestions, your feedback on how to better this, um, you know, the outcome. That way, so it's easier for you guys to see, easier for you guys to um, comment, easier for you guys to... Actually, I guess just see what's going on. So anyway, um, hope you guys are doing well. It is Monday. Oh, and my poor husband came home at lunch and he had already had a Monday. And that was at um, one o'clock our time. So one o'clock his time, our time feels like he had already had like half a week already. It was not a good day. But a lot of this is because he didn't sleep well, because um, of his allergies. But we're gonna work around that. So um, anyway, he's had a Monday, so when he comes home this evening, hopefully um, I can help ease his day. So, before we get started, I'll tell you guys about this evening. Tonight we're making chocolate martinis first, um, which we'll start in just a second. And then after that, we will do a quick basket that you can make from items found at the Dollar Tree, Dollar Store. I call it the Dollar Store. It was only this past week that I found out that it was like actually the Dollar Tree. There's no store called the Dollar Store. I mean, I'm sure there is, but that main um, store that is in what tons of shopping complexes and everything is called the Dollar Tree. I mean, you have the 99 cent store, you have other um, dollar franchises or whatever, but um, the Dollar Tree is the actual um, store. So I was doing all these like hashtag dollar store, hashtag dollar store finds. And in reality, it should be Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree finds. So anyway, we're gonna do a quick candy basket that um, you can do for Father's Day. Father's Day is in about two and a half weeks. I think it's the 19th, 18th or 19th, something like that. Um, so, but in reality, even though I'm doing this technically for Father's Day, it's good for any occasion. Um, I've had friends that have, or friends, yeah, and um, I've seen ways that um, people have done it by doing a, you know, like a spa set, nail kit, um, you know, doing different nail polishes or whatever. Gardening, um, you can do seeds and tools, um, snacks, chips, popcorn, um, teachers like markers, staplers, scissors, all that kind of stuff. So it's really easy to customize it and everything. So, but before we get started, we are going to start with tonight's martini. So, 
it, it's nice because the way I positioned this, all this stuff was kind of out of the way. All this stuff was kind of out of the way, <laughs> which is I like. I like a clean workspace. And even having stuff on this side and even having stuff on this side is bothering me. But I make things happen. That way, so I can do things for y'all. I had to turn my glue gun on. That way, so it will work in a few minutes. Okay, so martini glass, measuring, shaker. Now, in all honesty, I've never tried this chocolate martini. But when you find a recipe, um, you, why not? See if it works. Take all my lids off. I'm going to ask y'all a question here in a minute. See if you can help me out. So, first thing you need, oh, well, it's pretty simple. You need equal parts of each. Um, uh, Irish cream, one part. Vanilla vodka, one part. And then this one, I have a question. To me, it's supposed to be cream de, cream de cocoa, cac, cac, cocoa, cocoa, you know, like hot cocoa. But it's cream de cacao. Cacao? <laughs> I don't know. How do you say that? Cream de what? Anyways, you need one ounce of that. I guess the equal parts of all. Now, there are two different cream de cacaos or whatever. Um, there's a white one, or a clear one, and a dark one. And you need the dark one for this. And like I said, I've never made this martini in this way before. So, this will be new to me. Shake it up, of course. Why does it feel like I got too much in there? Give it a good shake. And of course, you know, if, you, if you're doing martini, you should actually, you know, do it for a bit longer because shaking it makes it really, 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 really cold. It mixes everything, of course, better. But for the sake of Facebook Live and your time, I'm only doing it for that a little bit. Now, I am actually going to move this stuff kind of out of the way real quick. That was so he got room to work here in a second. Okay. And I have spilled a tiny bit of alcohol on the table, which means it's going to drive me nuts. So anyways, let's give this a taste. That's actually really good. Not bad for a first time. That is a good combination. So, like I said, equal parts vanilla vodka, Irish cream, and the dark cream to cacao. <laughs> so, um, I actually did prepare a bit yesterday for today's Facebook Live because I did, like I said, I did not want to um, spend forever on it because, I mean, in all honesty, this is probably something that will take you. Mm, about an hour. It will take you about an hour from start to finish if you um, get all your supplies and everything. But I don't want to sit here on Facebook Live for an hour and waste your time. So I did a whole bunch of it yesterday. That way so you know we can speed this process along. But like I said, um, the majority of these things, everything, you can buy from the dollar store. You get yourself I got this. They got these right now for spring for planting. Um, Dollar Tree, dollar. You can buy craft foam, and um, I say craft foam. It's actually that floral foam, the stuff that goes in um, people use in flower arrangements or whatever. That flower um, foam, um, wooden dowels, which you can't find them all the time at the Dollar Tree. But when you do, 
grab them while you can because um, you never know what you need them for. Um, and then, packs of candy. They have packs, the long packs, of um, candy bars, M&M's, um, candy, whatever you want. Um, they usually have packs for like five or six in a pack for a dollar. Um, grab as many as you want, however big you want to make the basket. I grabbed um, probably too many in all honesty, about eight or so different types. So when you sit here and you round up everything that I've spent, I've probably spent about 15 bucks for this basket at the most. So, um, and it's probably even more than what I did. I pro it was probably like 11 or $12. But anyways, um, and even if you can't get these, these are typically only you see in the spring at the Dollar Tree, but they usually have like little silver buckets, they have mugs, um, they have all sorts of just random um, baskets and things that you could use to make this in. So, um, just because we're doing this for Father's Day doesn't mean that this is the only thing you can do. So, just remember that when you go into Dollar Tree and you see just like, you know, like a silver um, bucket. Or if you're doing something for Teacher Appreciation Week or for the end of the year, grab just a little mug or something. And like I said, you don't have to do candy. You can do nail polish. You can do, um, you know, seeds for gardening. You can do... Um, markers for teachers you can do just tons and tons of stuff so like i said we're gonna start with you got your bucket next thing you need is your craft foam i keep saying craft foam because i don't use it technically for any kind of floral stuff i'm not a floral arrangements kind of person i have two i think floral arrangements in my home I don't have any live plants in my home. Um, I get really, really excited over the very few plants I grow outdoors. So growing anything indoors is, would just probably blow my mind. Oh, right. hello, it says I got two people watching. So, hi, hello. <laughs> anyway, um, here we go. So, Take your, now you could use, they've got the floral styrofoam, they've got the floral foam, you could use either one. I personally prefer, prefer the um, foam, just because it's a whole lot easier to um, move or bend or whatever. Um, push it into whatever you're doing, and like I said, I'm still trying to figure out this whole camera setup thing. Push it into whatever you're doing and figure out exactly um, how far you need it to go. Because if you want, you may need to, um, like I said, you may need to take this floral, and this is the reason why I like the floral foam, is because if for some reason you need to cut it, it is super easy to cut. So floral foam and a butter knife, you can easily, woo, that's like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> you can easily cut it and place it, you know, where you need inside of the, um, you know, inside of the object that you're putting it in. So like I said, I, Put your pieces of floral foam on the inside as high as you think you need it. And again, this is just one of those um, however you want it to look. So um, for me, it's a whole lot easier to make things go all the, uh, almost to the top. That way so I don't have to fill up the space that's from here to here as much. So right now my craft foam comes up to here. So now I only have to worry about this space from here to here, if that makes sense. So 
put in my craft foam, and then I have taken wooden dowels. Like I said earlier, you can a lot of times find these at the Dollar Tree. Um, they have not been a consistent um, feature there, I guess supply there. Um, but you can find them at like Hobby Lobby's or Michael's. Now, in my advice, there are different widths. Widths. That's a hard word to say if you're from the South. Widths. W-I-D-T-H. Um, you know, so try and find one that's a bit thinner and smaller. It can be really long if you want to. That's fine. You can cut it down. But if they are really thick, it's a lot harder to um, cut them down. So I have already gone through and made, like I said, a whole bunch of them. Um, that way so I can make this go along easier. Now, if for some reason you need to cut down a dowel, it's really, really easy. Now, I have floral plier, floral, <laughs> floral, floral pliers. So I have three different sizes. I have, um, I have the long, longest, whatever. I have the medium, and it's the smallest. And that's ideally kind of what you want to do. You want to have three different sizes. You want to do long, medium, short. So it doesn't really matter what size you do, just do long, medium, short. Um, because that's kind of how you're gonna layer, layer your basket and feather it out that way so you fill in the spaces. Now, if you want to cut a, um, if you wanna cut a dowel, hi, Jill. Okay, I just wanna say hi because you did that and not very many people say hello, so I want to say hi. So, when you got your dowels and you want to cut it down to a certain size, use your floral pliers. And in all honesty, it's probably going to be flying somewhere else. But if you kind of shake it back and forth a little bit, it will probably pop off quite easily and get it to the size that you want. So, move those out of the way. Right over there, right over here. Now, okay, right, like I said, I made most of this um, yesterday. That way, so I wouldn't spend like forever your time. Now, I have all of my long ones together. Now, what I have done is I have taken one of my dowels, and depending on the candy, because like the M&Ms. They take up a whole lot more space. So I only put two. But you can, and these, I need three. So um, it's completely up to you. It's completely customizable. Customizable. Gosh, I have issues. Anyway, um, I typically, um, for the really long ones, like to do three. That way it fills all the space in and everything. Um, so what I'm going to do real quick is show you, I'm going to put one, and I'm not looking, I'm looking at my camera, so mind you, and you just kind of position it where you want, two, and personally I don't like colors near each other, so I don't try and put a yellow next to a yellow. I don't try and put a blue next to a blue. This is probably not going to look that great because I'm doing it kind of backwards. But that's what's nice is it's really easy to push the dowels into the craft foam. Okay, so now I have my outside, and I've got like six, and that's probably too many. If you did five and centered one of them, 
So there, six. And all I did was just, just push them into the craft foam that I have already. So you see how that works? Okay, so now I have the ones that are middle. So I got the long ones, the middle ones. And then I try again to fill in the spaces. And again, I am not one of those that likes colors next to each other. So like I've got brown here, brown here. If I try and do brown anywhere, it's gonna be right here. So I happen to have an M&M's. And also, to me, the M&M's are a lot wider. So if you have a space where you can see behind more and you want to fill in that space, I'll show you in a minute how to do the um, candy on the dowels. I promise you. That's coming in just a minute. I promise you. Just push it in further down. I promise you, I'm gonna show you in just a second how to get the candy onto the dowels. It's not hard, you'll be surprised. Like I said, just push everything in. And this is not gonna be the most prettiest of basket because I'm trying to do it somewhat bas um, backwards. And yeah, anyways, so I ended up with a few extra. I made extra because um, I didn't know what I was doing. Now, for your question, Jill, the way that I do this is I like to use hot glue because hot glue is really easy to peel off. It's not permanent. So I take one of my wooden dowels and I have, let's see, I'm gonna use my baby Ruth. And I like to line them up that way so they are facing the same way. Because for me, it's all, I mean, because to me, that way is not pretty. That way is pretty. <laughs> so, and all I do is take a line. If you hold it in your hand in a straight line, that way, take your hot glue go down the middle of the package and you're gonna see the paper kind of, well, melting. And then just stick your dowel on the back. Give it a second to um, dry and harden. And then, there you go. That's it, simple as that and it takes very little bit of um, hot glue and um, there you go. See, baby Ruth. And wait, yeah, okay, I did it. I just didn't even them up very well. Okay, right, so we've got that. Now I'm just going to take my last few couple of um, and like I said, I'm all about, oh, I put that in backwards. Filling in the spots. And you make your dowels as long or short as you need them. And like I said, this one is not the best of the best <laughs> because I am working backwards. But you get the point. All you're doing is pushing them in and evening them out. And then if you need to, you can go in and fill in the spaces with um, extra if you need. And then, once you're done with that, the only thing left you really have to do because I mean, technically, that's kind of cute <laughs> in itself. I mean, had I, you know, actually paid a little bit more attention to, you know, looking at it straight on, um, looking at it that way, I mean, it's still kind of cute, but 
if you had um, done it face on, you could have totally um, made it more precise. Pick out a ribbon of any kind you want. I've got just some gingham navy blue. I like to put just a dot of navy blue or a dot of um, um, what should we call it? Um, hot blue on the back, and then put your ribbon around. Make sure it is attached on the back, and then all you're doing is just tying a bow or. In all honesty, if you are good at doing those big fancy ribbons, which I am in all honesty trying to still figure out myself, um, do a big ribbon on the front. So, I tied a ribbon right there. Where are my scissors? And then... Straighten it up, pull it out. That was just not all like frayed up in there. And then, guess what? I get oh, <laughs> the marvels of doing stuff on live. Anyways, that would be better had I paid a little bit more attention. And also not been on live. But either way, you can um, make your bow any which way you want. Tighten it up. Cut your ends. And then guess what? You have got a cute little basket for less than 20 bucks for Father's Day or like I said any occasion and I don't know what time it is it's 5 58 and I know I didn't start this at 5 30 so in 20 minutes I guess like I said, I did speed along. I didn't pay attention so much to the time. Because, I, like I said, I don't want to sit here for an hour perfecting everything. Because I am definitely one of those that tends to want to, you know, make sure all the spaces are filled and everything. But just for a quick and just for, you know, purposes and everything. And to show you guys. It's that quick. Less than 20 bucks. And like I said, here is one, two, three, four, five, six, and just a second. Oh, wait, where'd it go? There is a bag of candy over here I didn't even use. So we're looking at like one, two, probably 10 bucks. Because the craft, like I said, the floral foam was a Dollar Tree thing as well. You're looking at like a $10, $12 gift. And it's that simple. So, like I said, I could not pass doing something like this for you guys. Um, I made this last summer for my husband for his birthday. Because it's really difficult to find something for him because he wants everything but none of it is technically within reason and um this actually went over very well um next week next week well that should be just a tad bit different my bestest friend in the whole widest world is coming to visit me on um Friday and she's staying through Monday. So typically I do these um, Facebook lives at 530 Mountain Time But she um, we're dropping her off at the airport during that time 
So I'm moving it to 6.30 Mountain Time, which will be 7.30 Central, 7.30, 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern. So um, it'll be just a tad bit later, which like I said, I'm still playing around with the times to see what's best with you guys. Um, but next week at 6.30 Mountain Time, I am going to show you how to make a quick two ingredient fudge that it blew my mind in all honesty the first time I made it. Um, two ingredients, that's all you need. And also, it was kind of odd that, because this week when I did the chocolate bars, I was just like, I, I gotta find something kind of chocolate related to do with the chocolate bars and chocolate candy, so I did the chocolate martini. So next week I'm doing fudge, but I was trying to find a martini that goes along with that. I couldn't come up with anything, so we're going to do the melon ball martini. The melon ball I think is pretty basic, generic, whatever. So we're going to do two ingredient fudge and the melon ball martini. But before I end, I have to thank you guys. I've had five or six people send me some questions, some suggestions for tutorials, and they have sent me ideas for things they want to see. And hopefully in the next couple of days, I can do a quick Facebook Live answering those questions. That way so um, I can answer what you guys want to know. Um, but I'm still working on it. I'm still trying, like I said, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to go about all this and everything. But like I said, um, I want to thank you guys for sending your questions, um, your suggestions, things you want to see. Um, that way so I know what to go further with this month. But with that all being said, thank you guys for hanging out. Miss Jill Patio Furniture. Thank you for hanging out with me this evening and saying hello and hanging out. And please do me a favor if you make this, take a picture and share it to the page. I would love to start an album of what everybody does from these Facebook Lives. So, um,. Hopefully you guys got a little bit inspired and had your Father's Day figured out now. So, um, yes, thank you, Jill. I'm looking forward to seeing your picture. All right, so with that being said, next week, an hour later, 6.30, two ingredient fudge, melon ball martinis. Y'all have a good week. Love y'all. Thank you for hanging out. And bye-bye.